Nurse Peony. Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I need to grab their vitals and basic information. And what time is their appointment? Okay. Yeah. Mm hmm. Okay, yeah, go ahead and send them back right now. I'm ready for them. Okay. Mm hmm. Bye. Thank you. So I'm Nurse Peony and I'm going to be getting you ready for your doctor's appointment this evening. Yeah, so I'm just going to be taking a little bit of information from you and grabbing your vitals, okay? All right, and what doctor were you here to see? Okay, and what's the reason for your visit today? I see. Well, if you want to go ahead and take a seat and get comfortable, we will start by getting your basic information. So, how we do it here is we actually use a tablet and you're going to just put in your basic information like you would on paperwork at other doctor, doctor's offices. So, I'm just going to show you. So, right here, you're going to put your first name last name here, okay? Then we'll have you put in your resident residential address, your phone number, email address, and then if you'd like to opt into receiving your medical information like test results, special messages that we have for you from the doctor, um, if you'd like to receive those through, your, through a patient portal and set that up, you can opt into that. Otherwise, we'll be contacting you by your preferred way of contact, so you can also um, put your preferred method down here, so email, text, or phone call, and once you get through with all the basic information, you're going to click submit down here, and then on the next side, the next page, it's just a brief um, medical history. It's very short, so you'll just fill that out. And then the front desk, do they grab your insurance information? Okay, perfect. So, once you fill that portion out, then just hit submit, and then I will take it back from you. Okay, perfect. If you have any questions, just let me know. Alright, so I'm going to set that right here for you, okay? Alright, so just take your time with that. I have a little bit of paperwork to fill out, so I'm going to be doing that. Great. That was quick. Right. So I'm just going to look that over if you don't mind real quick and make sure. Oh, you know what? I forgot. 
forgot to have you sign something. Let me go to the right form. Okay. It's basically just a privacy um, of your medical information form. So if you could just sign that for me right on there. Yeah, in that little rectangular box. Perfect. Thank you so much for doing that. Sorry about that. Glad I saw that. And I think everything else is good to go. Perfect. All right. So now that you have done that, we're going to be moving on with your vitals. All right. Now, do you have any allergies to anything? Okay, what about any medications? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, penicillin. And anything else? Okay. Do you remember the reaction you had when you were given penicillin? A rash. Okay. Pharmacy are you with? Mm -hmm. Okay. So Walgreens. Do you happen to know the cross streets? Okay. No worries. No worries. It's fine. Um, I will look up the address later. So the cross streets are fine. Thank you. All okay. So let's move on to grabbing your vitals. As I'm taking some of your vitals, I am going to be writing them down up here on the whiteboard. That way when the doctor comes in to do your checkup, they can refer to your vitals if they have any questions about anything. So I'm going to be writing those on the whiteboard. Let's go ahead and start with your height and weight. Do you know your height and weight? Mm-hmm. Okay. And when was the last time you checked your weight? Okay. All right. And what about your height? I did forget to ask you. Do you smoke? Okay. What about drink alcohol? And about how often do you do that? Okay. Any recreational drugs? Okay. And do you exercise? Okay. When you can, yeah. I would say that's about all of us. Um, so about how often do you think that is? Once, twice a week? Okay, I, that's great. Mm -hmm. Good for you. Okay. And what's your diet like? How would you best describe your diet? Mm -hmm. Now, as a seven days a week is uh, Monday through Friday, and then you kind of um, have whatever you'd like on the weekends. Okay. And when was your last dental exam? around there. 
and did you receive a cleaning at that appointment? Yeah, I would say it's about time to make another appointment for that since it is way past six months, but you know, it happens, get busy. But if you do remember, I would make an appointment sometime soon, especially before the holidays, because I do know dentists, dental offices tend to get a little busy during the holidays. So I would go ahead and make an appointment soon, even if you need to book it out a week or two in advance to make sure you can have time. Okay, it's very important. You know, it's not just for um, cleaning our teeth. It's also, there can be a lot of health issues associated um, with our mouth and our teeth and our gums that a dentist would be able to see during your dental exam. So I definitely recommend that you go in soon, okay? All right. So let's finally grab those vitals. It's my first um, appointment of the day, so sorry I'm a little all over the place here. So let's go ahead and we got your height and weight, so I'm going to write that down. So that was, so you're 5'9", 145 pounds, so I'm going to write that down for the doctor, okay? Let's see, so your height is 5'9 and you're 145 pounds, so that would put your BMI at, I think that would be a 4. Let's put 4. Yeah. I'll double check that later. So it's a very good number, nice and healthy. So now let's go ahead and grab your temperature, okay? Make sure this thing is working. There we go. Okay, so I'm just going to be... I'm not going to be applying this directly to your forehead. I'm not going to be making contact. It's just going to kind of um, hover next to your forehead and take your temperature, okay? All right. It's going to be placing it on your forehead. Okay. 99.2 is your temperature. Very good. A little warm, but you're good. Um, have you been having any crazy symptoms lately? Have you had a sore throat? Have you felt warm, achy, chills? Okay. All right. Oh, okay. So you have a history with allergies? Alright. And you think that's why you've been coughing a little bit? Right. Yeah, allergies can definitely bring on a cough and, you know, stuff up our noses. Um, allergies do show a lot of symptoms that like a common cold typically does. So it can be confusing, but I know around this time of year, personally, I do as well get um, allergies pretty bad, a seasonal allergies, yeah. So if it's, if it's bad, if you're suffering with it, I can make a note here um, and write it on the whiteboard and the doctor can prescribe something for you. Um, are you taking any over-the-counter medications for your allergies? And which over-the-counter medication is that? Mm -hmm. And it's one a day. Okay. What about Benadryl? Are you taking like a Benadryl at night to help with that? Sometimes. Okay. 
So the doctor can prescribe something a little stronger to help you cope with your allergies and not be so miserable and stuffed up. So I will make a note also that you're struggling with a cough just so we can verify that it is just allergies and nothing more going on, okay? And then I'm going to make a note just in case the doctor doesn't see my note on the clipboard that you guys need to discuss your allergies, okay? Are you doing okay so far? Good. Do you need like a water or anything? Perfect. So let's go ahead and grab your blood pressure now. Now I see that your legs are crossed. Can you go ahead and uncross those for me? Perfect. Thank you. So I'm going to be getting your blood pressure. I'm sure you've done this before. So just, I'm going to be placing this cuff around your arm and it's going to feel a little tight, but just try to remain still during it. Go ahead and extend your arm out for me. Perfect. Thank you. Does that feel okay? Perfect. Right, so now I'm going to let me just make sure this is good to go here. There we go. Alright, so I'm going to start applying some pressure to the cuff and it's going to start squeezing your arm. on your arm okay. Hmm. Sorry about this. It's not very professional. Just want to make sure I get an accurate reading though. This isn't my um my blood pressure cuff. This is somebody else's so Pretty tight. Okay, good. There we go. All right. So you're at one forty over twenty five. Okay. Very, very good. Great numbers. Get your heart rate. So to do this, I'm going to be listening to your heart, okay? So yeah, you can, if you need to cross your legs again, you can. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to be taking a listen to your heart, okay? So no need to do anything, just sit still and let me do the work, okay? And I'll tell you if you need to 
Um, take a deep breath. So just go ahead and breathe normal at first, please. All right. Comfortable. Okay. All right. Deep breath for me. Good. Mm -hmm. Another one. Sounds like a very healthy heart. So great news. Didn't hear any breathing issues. Heart sounds strong. So very good job. Thank you. So for that, I'm going to say your heart rate was very good. Okay, good heart. Let me make a note on my clipboard for your file for that real quick. Your temperature was 99.2. Okay. Have you had any major surgeries in the last six months? Okay. What about ever? injuries in the last two years that have resulted in a trip to the ER? Okay. Alright, so we're good there. Um, I am noticing that you have a wound up here. Okay, what's that from? Go, did that happen? Mm -hmm. Well, the reason I ask is the band aid looks a little old, a little suspicious. So I have an alcohol pad here and some neosporin and a bandage. So if you'd like, I can pop up some, pop on some gloves in a second and change that out for you and make sure it's all clean. All right. So, we have your vitals. Now I'm just going to do a quick exam before the doctor comes in. I'm going to be looking into your ears, nose, eyes, and your mouth, okay? And I have a tongue depressor here that I'm going to be using to start off the um, exam, mini exam. So I'm just going to put my gloves on here for that. some pink gloves today because it's the little things that get us through the day, right? Let's try to slide these on without making too much noise. Which is basically impossible. How's your day been? Mm-hmm. That's good to hear. Hopefully your night after this is nice also and relaxing. I hear that the weather is supposed to finally start to cool down next week, so that will be very nice. Very nice. Yes. Okay. Still comfy. fresh, clean, and most importantly, brand new tongue depressor. So I'm just going to be looking in to make sure I don't see anything alarming, okay? 
I'm not looking for anything too specific, but I am missing my... Oh, there it is. Just all over the place today, I apologize. going to be using this little light, okay? So, if you could just say, ah, uh, for me, and stick at your tongue nice and wide, okay? Ah, uh, very good, ah. Uh, tongue out, pushing down on it just a little bit. Very good, now just leave your mouth like that, perfect. So I'm just taking a look at your tonsils. And your tongue and the roof of your mouth. Looks good. Inside of your cheeks. Okay, could you open your mouth just a little bit wider? I'm sorry. Thank you. Sorry if that was uncomfortable. I'm just going to toss this in the trash behind you there. Alright, so your tonsils look a little teeny bit inflamed. Alright. had any tenderness, soreness, any irritation there. Alright. And I'm assuming you've been sneezing quite a lot due to your allergies. Alright. Just going to jot down a note on the board behind me real quick. Don't be worried, I just want the doctor to be aware so that they can take an extra good look at your tonsils, okay? And just so you know, I, I don't know if I already said this, but the doctor is going to be looking at your chart and doing a thorough look through of all of your notes, medical history, your vitals and such. The whiteboard is just things that I noticed as their nurse um, to pay extra care to. So please don't worry about that. This isn't like our official chart for you, okay? I've been writing everything down as you've seen. So I just want to let you know the doctor's going to be looking at all the paperwork that we have down for you as well. All right. Now, switch this out and I'm going to take a look in your nose, okay? We're going to work our way down to the top. So if you could go ahead and tilt your head back just a little bit, not too much. Okay, you're looking into your nose. Is that painful or annoying or anything? All right. What about if I push down on this side? Okay. So your nose looks a little raw, for lack of a better word. Have you been blowing your, your nose a lot, I'm assuming? Okay. Um, what are you using to blow your nose? Okay. So yeah, um, that's great. Soft tissue is the best. So um, 
just try to take it easy. Try more just patting your nose if that makes sense instead of, you know, try not to be aggressively blowing your nose too much. Just when it's absolutely necessary. I know it's so irritating and annoying to have a runny nose. Um, but if you are at home, some people do put Kleenex, kind of bunch it up and stick it up their nose to kind of help with the runny nose. I know it's not the best look maybe for everyone, but just a little tip to kind of give your nose a break. You can also apply an ointment or a cream or some Vaseline just on the outside of your nose because I do notice that it is a little red on the outside right here as well and that is also due to irritation from over blowing your nose. Okay. So, I'm going to be looking into your eyes now, but we'll definitely get to the bottom of your allergies and have the doctor hopefully prescribe something a little um, more powerful for you, a little more strength, so you're not suffering so much with the allergies, because I know that's, that's so annoying, such a pain to deal with, yeah, no fun. All right, so now I'm going to be looking into your eyes. Okay, so just keep your head still. You don't need to tilt it back this time. Just nice and still and relaxed. And if you can, just pick a spot on the wall behind me or on me. Um, I have some cute little pandas on my shirt if you want to focus on one of these guys. Um, and then I'm just going to have you keep your gaze wherever you choose to land it. Okay. All right. Just look irritating at all to you? Mm -hmm. A little bit. I could kind of tell. I seem a little sensitive to it. How many hours of sleep do you get at night? Six. Is that an average? And is that follow through into the weekend or is that typically Monday through Friday? Mm hmm And how many hours would you say you're getting on the weekend? Oh, okay, so a lot more. That's good. Okay. And do you follow a sleep schedule um, and a nighttime routine that is, for the most part, consistent every day of the week, every night of the week? Mm-hmm. taking any supplements or medications for sleep? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you take the Benadryl for your allergies and it helps you sleep at night? All right. Yeah, I know a lot of people do take Benadryl as a sleep aid. It does work pretty well for most people. The only thing is, um, if you take it every night, uh, the same amount every night, um, it can tend to wear off as far as its, its um, effect of helping you sleep. So I know some people like to switch off onto like Sequil, which is over the counter. There are other types of medications that people take. Some people choose to take melatonin and that's kind of a touchy subject for some people. Some people think that it's great for sleep and for me personally, I have tried it for sleep and it works really, really well, but I do actually also use Benadryl for sleep and I like to switch off to melatonin sometimes. Now, some people don't like to take melatonin ever because they are afraid that it messes with your body's natural process of creating its own melatonin. Now, I'm not saying that's incorrect because it can happen, but at the end of the day, we all need to get our sleep right. 
So it's the most important thing, in my opinion, that we can be doing for our health is getting a good night's rest. So I say if it helps you, do it because, you know, we need to be getting a good night's rest. Now that's, you know, not across the board. Obviously there are things we shouldn't be doing to help us sleep. There, I'm sure there are some things out there that are not super healthy, but in my opinion, melatonin, perfectly fine. If it helps you, do it. Would you say you have trouble falling asleep during the week? Mm-hmm. Okay. And what about the weekends? Are you going to bed super late and then just sleeping well into the morning? All right. And what do you think keeps you up at night? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I see. All right. Um... Well, I definitely think you need to bring this up to the doctor whenever they come in because that does sound like something that you need to be discussing with the doctor. And there are so many treatment options for you, so many different tests that we can run, specialists and etc. that we can be doing. So you have all the tools available to you. So I definitely suggest and encourage you to bring it up to the doctor and they can take it from there, okay? can, you know, refer you to a sleep study specialist, an ENT. We can try a couple different medications if you're open to it. Um, maybe we suggest some lifestyle changes if you feel like maybe that's what's causing the sleep issues. So certainly, you know, we can try a whole bunch of different things, all right? Okay. So would you like me to put that on the board? Okay, no problem. be very, very nice today if we could figure out your allergies and your sleep problems. Either one of those alone can be life-changing, let alone both of them. So, definitely need to get you out for that, okay? Alright, so now I'm going to be checking your ears. And this should be the last thing that we need to check on your face, on your head. So, if you could just tilt your head that way to one side. Thank you. Take a look into your ears. Now, have you been experiencing any issues with your ears that I need to know about? Any irritation, redness, discharge, pain? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, go ahead and turn to the other side for me, please. Thank you. What about this ear? Okay, so no pain, discomfort, discharge. Okay. All right, they look pretty healthy to me. A little bit of wax, but that's pretty, pretty typical. Um, do you experience ear infections on a regular basis. Um, so, I guess more than once a year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Alright. That's good. <laughs> At least you got that going for you. Um, what about your vision? Do you have any family history of impaired vision? Do you wear contacts, glasses? Okay. All right, and when was the last time you had an eye exam? Oh, okay. All right, perfect. If you haven't had any issues with it, then there's no need to get an eye exam, right? Okay. So, let's go ahead and patch up your wound for you. Let me make a quick little note that I am going to be doing that. And I also meant to ask you, do you ever experience headaches or migraines? Okay. Any family history of migraines? All right. I'm so sorry. How long ago did you say you got the cut on your forehead? Okay. Any 
and just cleaned it up, I'm assuming yourself at home. to be peeling away the bandage on your forehead. All right, so I'm going to be doing it nice and gently. Perfect. Okay. Throw that in the trash can behind you. I have a cleansing pad in here and I'm going to be just swiping this across your forehead. Make sure it's nice and clean. Playing some Neosporin, all right? So we don't need to do too much on here, just a little bit. Just kind of pat it on nice and gently. Just pat it right here, and then a little bit around the surrounding area here. All right. Feel okay? Let's get a new bandage on that for you. little things away. Alright. Good as new. And that, that wound should heal up here pretty, pretty soon. It's not too bad. So, if you want the doctor to look at it, you can have him peel the bandage away and then just push it back down that's what you guys want to do, but I'm not worried about it, especially the way that you got it. I'm not super concerned about it at all, right? Okay. Did you have any questions for me about anything? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, so the doctor, whenever they come in, they'll be going over all of that with you. It's not really my area of specialties, but the doctor will be able to take care of all of that for you. So you're going to be in very, very great hands today, okay? Now, I just need to make sure I have everything that I needed. Toss these gloves. Um, did the front desk, did they go over a, um, go over a follow-up appointment with you? Okay. Yeah, for what you're being seen for today, I do recommend, and the doctor will as well, definitely a two-week follow-up, okay? So I'm going to make a note for the front here that we need to get you down for a two-week follow-up. If you want to talk to the doctor about it, you certainly can, but I'm almost certain that they will um, be ordering a two-week follow-up for you, since this is something that will probably most likely need to be um, seen at least a few times for. And then also, I'm going to be sending out referrals for, um, possibly 
and ENT just from what I've seen today. I'm going to wait and see what the doctor says first, but that is a possibility. Um, are you okay if we do end up sending you to a specialist like an ENT? Okay. And have you ever thought about having your tonsils removed? Okay. Did you have strep throat a lot as a child? Mm hmm How often would you say? And about how recently did you last have strep throat? Okay. So, removing our tonsils can actually help with that so that you don't get strep throat. So, have you ever considered having a tonsillectomy? Mm-hmm. Okay. And what was the reason that you didn't go through with it? I see. All right, well, it can be extremely beneficial. You know, they're kind of just there. They don't really serve a huge purpose, and it's completely safe and totally fine to have them removed especially when you do suffer from getting a lot of infections in your tonsils that obviously, you know, you just remove them, they're gone, and then you don't have that problem anymore. So I'm going to make a note on the board that um, you keep that in mind because that can really save you some time and a lot of pain from getting strep throat infections in your throat area, your tonsils. What about your adenoids? Do you still have your adenoids? Okay. Um, I'm just going to feel around right in this area. Are you okay with that? Okay. Are you okay that I'm not wearing my gloves? Okay, my hands are nice and clean. So if you could just tilt your head back just a little bit, and I'm just going to feel around, see if there's anything that jumps out to me, to my attention here. I'm going to be applying a little bit of pressure. Let me know if it's uncomfortable if or if you'd like me to stop. Any pain? Right. Okay. So... Do you sleep with a partner? The only reason I ask is have they made any complaints of snoring, tossing and turning in the middle of the night? Okay. Well, you know, I am so sorry about this. I know you came in for something totally unrelated to all of this. Um, but there are a few things that I definitely recommend you bringing up to the doctor during your visit. Um, you know, don't be afraid to bring all this up to them. It's totally fine to bring this all up in this appointment, and I'm going to be making notes to make sure that all of this gets covered. But yeah, I'm glad you did come in today to see me and that we we're able to, you know, hopefully get you on the road to figuring some of this stuff out because, you know, people say, oh, that's allergies, they're not a big deal. But you know what? They are a big deal, and they can be, they can really take a toll on a person's life depending on how severe they are. And like I said, it can you can really suffer through allergies, especially if, you know, you're obviously not getting any relief or help for it. But there are so many things that we could be trying and different dosages, different types of medications, or even changing your over-the-counter options as well. So I'm going to put um, tonsil tonsils down on the board so that the doctor can refer to these notes and go over exactly why the word tonsils is on the board. They'll know. They'll know why. But yeah, tonsillectomy um, and adenoidectomy, um, you know, it is painful after surgery. Obviously, you don't feel anything during. You're completely put under. But... I would say 
there's a good week there, you know, the first couple of days are pretty painful and you're going to be eating lots of popsicles, milkshakes, so it's a good excuse to be eating milkshakes for a few days. Um, you know, and you've really got to keep up on your fluids, but I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself because I know you haven't even agreed to doing that, but I just know um, on a personal level, level and dealing with so many patients who've struggled with strep throat and other things that it's just like life-changing and it's life-changing for their for their breathing and night and their sleep, not just the strep throat. So I am a huge advocate for if, if you have issues getting them removed. Um, you know, you really don't hear of any negative things happening from getting your tonsils and adenoids removed, you know. Obviously, everything in our body is there for a reason, but if it's doing more harm than good, and, you, you know, they're not serving a huge purpose, I think it's totally fine. So, I know that's a lot of information to throw at you at one time. I do apologize. I just love getting to know my patients and making sure I'm doing everything I can to make sure that you're healthy and happy and maybe finding things that you came in not knowing could be a problem because, you know, no one walks around, not everyone walks around being a doctor and is aware of all their symptoms even, so... Some people think this is just the way life is, but that's not always the case, and there are a lot of things that can be helped and with science and medicine these days, just take full advantage, you know, try things out. But I do apologize for putting all of that on you tonight. So I have all of the notes from everything today, so don't feel like you can completely empty your mind from most of this. Everything is written down and the very important things I wrote down as notes behind me. And then once the doctor sees that, they'll refer to your notes here and they'll be able to reference these and see every detail that I wrote down about everything you told me and everything that I found today. Um, and then if the doctor does think there's some issues there that can be addressed and helped, then we'll be referring you to specialists and we'll make sure that your insurance is going to be accepted so you don't need to worry about that. And then if you have any questions and want to speak to me specifically, I, you know, don't hesitate to do that at all. Just call the front desk and ask for me. Again, my name is Nurse Peony and I'm not always by the phone. I'm usually assisting, you know, and taking care of patients, but just leave your name, number, and a message, and I'll remember you, and I'll call you back whenever I can, okay? But yeah, just be honest with the doctor. Um, you know, I know there's a totally different reason why you're here, so I really, really wish you well on that, and I really hope that you can get to the bottom of it and start feeling better very, very soon, okay? All right, well, it was so lovely to meet you, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your night, okay? All right, take care. Bye.